Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cash Freak Tim from CashFreak.com, and today we are talking about pocket queries. Now, if you followed us in our last couple videos, either on YouTube or on my website, CashFreak.com, you'll know we've covered a couple of the more intermediate topics of geocaching, you know, how to take pocket queries and start manipulating the data. But I've gotten a few emails from people basically stating that they don't even know how to make pocket queries. So we're going to go over and create a basic tutorial here that will talk about pocket queries, what they are, what they do, how to create them and how to send them to your GPS. So let's get started. So to create pocket queries you're going to head on over to the pocket query page in geocaching's website which is geocaching.com slash pocket. Once you do that you can head in here. So to create a pocket query you're going to click on create new query and once the page loads this is your pocket query form that you're going to use to create your pocket query. So it's going to have a few things that you're going to need to fill out. The first thing is you're going to have to give it a name. Now I usually recommend giving the name a descriptive name to describe the pocket query itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this one Easy Around Campground. Next question it's going to ask you is what days do you want the pocket query to be generated and basically what that means is your pocket query can be run once a day. You can either manually come to the site and you can run it yourself whenever you need it or you can have it run for you weekly. So for now I am going to say I want this to run every Saturday. The next question it's going now the next question it's going to ask you is how many geocaches you want your pocket query to hold. The one thing to keep in mind here is you want to make sure that the number you put in here does not exceed the amount of geocaches that your particular GPS can hold. Every GPS has a different maximum amount of geocaches it can hold. So you want to check your GPS's documentation to make sure you don't exceed that number. For now I'm going to leave it at the default of 500. The next question it's going to ask you are what types of geocaches you want to be included in your pocket query. Well for me I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to say I want traditional caches, I want multi-caches, and I want virtual caches. We're going to have selected types or you can have it include any type. You know, personally, I recommend if you want to cut down on the number of geocaches in an area, you want to pick just the specific types you're looking for and leave it at that. So let's move on to the next question, which is going to be what type of container size are you going to be looking for? Now, by default, you can see it, it is default selected for any size container, but you can go in here and you can say, I just want it to show me maybe I want the large, the regulars, the smalls. I want to still want to see virtual caches. So basically I want to rule out any geocaches that are of an unknown size or micros. I really don't like looking for micros. They're too small. They're too difficult. So we're just going to have our pocket query here select the small virtual caches, regular and large. Next question it's going to now the next thing it's going to ask you is just some more options to filter out some of the geocaches for your pocket query. You can see there's just a list of different options in here you can choose from. Personally, I don't want the pocket query to show me any geocaches that I own, so I'm going to select that I don't own. I don't want it to show me geocaches that I've already found, so I'm going to select I haven't found. You can go through and you can select any of these other options you want, but I'm just going to leave those two checked for now, and we'll go on to the next section. So the next thing it's going to ask you is to, you can specify what difficulty or terrain you want to filter out. Now, let's say this weekend I'm going to be going out geocaching, I'm going to go be going out with some friends. I don't want to do any very difficult ones. So what I'm going to say here is I only want it to show me the geocaches that are a difficulty in a terrain less than three. That way it'll keep it'll it's only going to show me the geocaches that are you know very easy to find and I think it'll be easier for me and my friends to find these geocaches and that way we're going to filter out the more difficult ones. Now the next section is going to ask you what countries or states you want to include in your pocket query. Now 
for the most part because of the next section we're going to actually be putting in a address we can ignore this this for right now if you're running a very large query that is probably going to spill over into a couple different states you might want to go in here and you might want to say you know maybe I'm geocaching on the Ohio Pennsylvania border I only want it to show me the geocaches in Ohio so you could just select the state of Ohio in here now the next section is going to ask you the origin where the pocket query is going to start from and then spread out over a distance. So as you can see right here, you have a couple options. You know, I can have it search from my home location, which is the coordinates I put in my account settings on geocaching's website. If I know a particular geocache, it's GC code, I can manually type in the geo, GC code, and it'll show me all the other caches around it. You can search by postal code, or if you know the exact coordinates of where you're going to be, this can also be helpful. You can put in the exact coordinates, and it will show you all the geocaches around those coordinates. I am going to put in right now, I'm just going to put in a area code, and then we're going to move on to the next section. Now the next section is going to ask us the distance from this location we chose up here that we're going to search for. Now obviously we want to cut this number down. We don't, want to, we don't need all the geocaches 100 miles away from this location. So to keep it simple, we're just going to say we want to just see the geocaches that are within 5 miles of this area code. Moving on to the next section, you can see you can select whether the geocache has been placed within a specific period of time. You know, maybe you wanted to just show you geocaches that have been placed within the last six months. You can go in here and do that. So for right now, though, I'm going to leave this section on none selected, and we're going to go on to the next section, which is attributes. Now, attributes are going to be the things that whoever hid the geocache they basically set up about the geography of their geocache um, to give you a couple examples you know you can select this one dogs are welcome um, there's a whole bunch of different attributes in here um, you can select if you if climbing gear is required if you, you know you're going to be doing some climbing maybe has a walkway where you can push a baby through this is another popular one as well bicycles are welcome again if you select this you're probably going to get geocaches along a paved bike trail which is very nice now you can also exclude attributes as well so maybe you want to stay away from anything that needs climbing gear anything that needs scuba gear anything that is a dangerous geocache you can exclude those from your pocket query as well so we're going to select a couple of those real quick and then finally the last section is where you want the pocket query to be outputted to you can either have it send your pocket query to an email address which is really nice especially if you have it automatically run the pocket query the other question that's going to ask you here is what format you want your pocket query to be in now this is also very important there's two options you have GPX and you have LOC the difference is an LOC file is only going to contain the coordinates for the geocache as well as the name. That's it. It's not going to have anything else associated with it. So unless you have a very old GPS that won't accept the GPX format, and most of them do by this point, you, you probably want to stay away from the LOC files. Make sure GPX is selected here. And then the final two things it's going to ask you if you want to compress the files into a zip format. Uh, for the most part, yes, make sure that is selected. It just makes the download of the pocket query much quicker to get to your computer. Um, unless for whatever reason your, the computer you're on doesn't have the ability to unzip files, you can uncheck that if you want. But otherwise, I say leave it zipped. It'll just make everything quicker. The final thing it's going to ask you here is if you want the pocket query's name to be included in the file name. And what that means is whenever the pocket query is sent to you, it's going to be just sent with a bunch of random numbers. You know, 369257.gpx. You can also have the pocket query be named whatever we called it above. And if you remember, way up at top, we called the, the, this particular pocket query easy around campground. So I see no reason not to do that, so I would say just include it. If you're making multiple pocket queries, it'll make it much easier to tell which are which. Once you have your pocket query set up the way you want, you know, you can go back through here and change any of those settings we just went over. Once you have it set up the way you want, you're going to go in here and you're going to click Submit Information.
it will then run the pocket query it will give you the amount of geocaches that the pocket query created up here and it'll also let you preview this the pocket query itself by clicking on this link you can click the link and it will show you all of the geocaches that are put into your pocket query you can go back and again you can modify it as you need it and run the pocket query again once you have it set up the way you want it, you can head back to the Your Pocket Query section. And if you scroll down, you will see all your pocket queries. And you can see the one we created today is right here. One other nice thing feature I like about the Pocket Query page, you can click this link right here to preview the Pocket Query in Google Maps. As you can see, it's going to show you all the geocaches that are in the pocket query we created here on a map. You can click them individually, and it'll show you the name and all the information about the geocache. You can head back to the page. And as you can see right now, this pocket query hasn't yet been officially run, and a file has not been generated yet. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and click on the current day. Today is Wednesday and page will flash and shortly it will run your pocket query. Now I just checked my email and it looks like my pocket query is ready to go so I'm going to refresh this page. Click pocket query is ready for download again and there it is. It only took a few minutes for it to be created this time around. If you want it to be downloaded to your computer you can just click on the name and it will be downloaded to the download section on your computer. As you can see the pocket query sends you two files. One is the actual pocket query itself which is named Easy Around Campground. You're also going to get a second GPX file as well which will end in the extension WPTS. What WPTS is, is additional waypoints that will go along with your pocket query. For example, a lot of people, when they're hiding their geocaches, they will enter in additional waypoints for parking or maybe for some sightseeing around the geocache. That's what this file creates as well. So when you send the files to your GPS, you want to make sure you select both of them. Now to get the pocket query to your GPS, you can do it one of two ways, and it really depends on your particular GPS. A lot of GPSs you can just plug into your computer, and you can drag and drop these files right onto the GPS, and that's it. That's all it takes. Other GPS units require an additional piece of software to be used to get the geocaches to be put on your GPS. Now you can head over to this section on geocaching.com's website, which geocaching.com slash software and it'll show you a whole bunch of different applications to get the geocaches on your computer. The two I recommend on Windows is the Geocaching Swiss Army Knife also known as GSAC and that one is a very robust program it does everything under the sun if you want one that's a little more easy to use check out Easy GPS it's a little bit more simpler of a program. If you happen to be using a Mac the one I recommend, the one I use, is called Mac Caching. Again, very simple to use, very similar to Easy GPS. Now, all three of those programs I just mentioned are 100%. They have free versions. So head on over to their websites, download the programs, and that will allow you to send the pocket queries to your GPS. So hopefully this tutorial helped you guys out a little bit. I know I went over it kind of quick, but hopefully this will give you the information you need to get in there and start creating pocket queries for yourself. You can create as many pocket queries as you want. Like I said, you can run each one once a day. So go ahead, create some. Don't worry if you screw up. If you do, just create another one and keep going. Uh, and some additional tutorials, if you want to check out on our website, cashrate.com, you can also see them on YouTube. And if you guys have any additional comments, questions, leave them in the comments section. And until next time, I will talk to you guys later.